Now I request our chief guest, Dr. Sudhir Agashe, to guide us in our journey towards improvement. I will rather use his special word towards betterment. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I am carrying the same roles which has given me strength to stand here in front of you. And at the same time, I am carrying the same agenda which is in front of me, the unique agenda which I have seen, wherein there is no time mentioned to each speaker. Is the liberty to a speaker given for the first time? Otherwise, normally you speak for two minutes, you speak for five minutes, and the program ends there. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, Dignity is on the dais and half the dais, and my dear students. It's indeed a great pleasure for me to be with you and with your institution. I know for this institution for last so many years. I got an opportunity to visit this institute two years before. Got another opportunity to come today again to share my ideas about PLC and automation. When I say my ideas uh, coupled with uh, 20 odd years hard experience, burning fingers, working in an industry with a temperature of 48 degrees Celsius, working in an institution which has got a history of 160 years and a department of instrumentation which has got a history of 50 years. That's from where I came. And of course, uh, I, I was really happy looking at the film which you prepared. And I was very happy when I saw Professor Gardgild again as a teacher. He was my teacher, he's still a teacher. I, I, was, I was really uh, got energy from Professor Gardgild. He taught me so many things. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, though time not mentioned, let me have a time frame for me because the most difficult problem for a teacher, once he stands here and in front of you students, minimum 60 minutes. That's a problem. I'm going to limit now, looking at the audience, looking at the other programs, I'm going to limit for 10 to 15 minutes, not more than that. And of course, after that, you and me will be together and we'll uh, start our discussion. Two things which I'm going to talk about is the way you are looking at uh, PLC, the way you are looking at automation. I want to change that vision of PLC and automation because we all carry that PLC all the time with us. Whenever we do something, we think logically. For example, if you want to come to a particular college and if you want to join a particular college, you do a logical thinking saying that okay, this is a college, there is another possibility, this much fees, this much facility, so on and so forth. And then you take a logical decision, where do I go? Whenever you want to travel, you say that which is the shortest route, which is the cheapest route, which will be the fastest route, because of which I can reach to the destination. That's again a logic. Unfortunately, that virus which has entered in everybody's mind, and that virus is called as examination, which has killed this logical thinking capability of most of the students. And most of the students have started thinking that why to study just to give an examination. And that to prepare for the examination within the preparation leave, not continuously. And that's where the difficulty. Whenever we all start talking about PLC, whenever we start talking about automation, what happens is the domain which we are talking about is a very vast domain and I started realizing the power of automation when I just heard maybe 15-20 years before one statement by great industrialist Mr. Ford, Henry Ford, when there was a meeting of board of directors of uh, Ford Industries and he made a statement because one of the directors uh, unusually, because in front of food, normally nobody used to talk. But one director could get that power and stood up and say, Mr. Ford, it's good that we are manufacturing very good vehicles and it is becoming a status symbol 
if you have that vehicle, that means you must be a great person. But there is a demand from the users that they should have choice for the color. And that's, that's the statement which was made by a director. Mr. Ford quietly looked at that director and said, gentlemen, I have no objection in having customers demanding for the color, but the only request is the color must be black. Now, if you look at this statement, you will find this is a beautiful statement of arrogance. If you look at this statement and if you analyze this statement from the perspective of a management guy, you will find this statement as an arrogance because in those days, Ford was having the monopoly of manufacturing cars. But when I look at the statement, when I analyze the statement as an engineer, I felt it's not, an, it's not arrogance. It's the constraint of technology. Because if Ford started giving cars with different colors, the production rate in those days will come down drastically. Because again, the process with the help of which he was spending, if I want to change the paint, I have to take a shutdown for seven days, clean all those seven tanks and the nozzles. Otherwise, the car with blue color will go along with blue color and black spots. And that's where Ford was very, very studious in saying this statement. Unfortunately, this statement was taken as arrogance. And that's where I started realizing where is that, why this has not happened. And today, you will find the cars which are being manufactured, more than 256 colors manufactured side by side and no mixing of colors. You will get green color car means green color cars, no patches. Absolutely fine color. Now, why this has happened? This has happened only because of technology. And that technology is nothing but automation. And that's where you will find today, whenever you book a car, you can see how your car is getting manufactured on the conveyor belt. And you will know at what time your car will be there for delivery, ready for delivery. Now that's the technology and that's what has happened. Now why this has happened, this is just because companies change their relay-based logic into PLC-based logic. And that's why the strength of automation is underlined. Unfortunately, we have not understood strength of automation for the simple reason we feel learning a programming language is learning automation. That's not correct. Programming language, in my opinion, can have a share of hardly 5% on the domain of automation. And the reason for this, if you look at the entire automation domain, you will find what do you need to do actually and that's where I always kept on saying that you have to concentrate more on understanding the problem. The biggest, the biggest worry with industries is engineers, those who are coming out, won't understand the language of a customer, won't understand the problem because there is a systematic method of knowing how to understand a problem. But in most of the cases, what happens instead of understanding the problem, we understand the problem the way we wanted to solve it. And that's where the difficulty. Because we know the solution and we change the problem to suit to the solution thanks to our examination system. And that's where I kept on saying that if you really want to change engineers and I fought with all industry guys when I also saw that slide where in MNCs are saying 75% engineers are not recruitable. I challenged them. And that challenge was from instrumentation and control department. I challenged them, show me a single line in my syllabus, show me a single subject in my syllabus, show me a single experiment in my syllabus, show me a single laboratory in my department or anywhere, wherever instrumentation and control is being offered where there is a mismatch or there is a gap between theory and practice. Industry guys could not show me a single line. And they had to accept that I'm sorry, we made this statement, 
based on NASCOM theory. And that NASCOM theory, unfortunately, is related to IT graduates. We are not that bad. We are absolutely not that bad. I kept on challenging because I have both the experience, worked in industry, came back in academics. I said, this is not done. You can't blame like this. Be participative. And then we realized that there are many colleges in this country wherein proper facilities are not there, proper facilities are there, but the enthusiasm is not there. Enthusiasm is there, but the freedom is not there. Freedom is there, but exposure is not there. And these problems are linked problems. And if you want to solve that problem, the problem of recognition. The industry world must recognize all the engineering efforts which we all put in in educational institutions. They must recognize this. And that's where we started working with them. And finally, we came out with a consortium of eight IITs, one NIT, two universities, and only college from the country, College of Engineering Pune. We formed a consortium. We said, OK, let's solve the problem. Stop the blame game, because this can continue. You will say your students are of no use. I'll say my students are great. Ultimately, who is suffering, student and the industry, both. So let's put our efforts together. Let's do something wherein we can develop a technology wherein a student can learn anytime, anywhere, number one. Second, let's put challenge in front of a student, not the question paper. Because if you put a question paper in front of him, he can solve as a prototype, as a model. Because there is, we call that as a match the pair type of thing. If this is the question, these four lines means five marks. Unfortunately, we have developed that culture in education system, and because of that, we have ruined our entire education system. Education means learning without any boundary, learning without any expectation, learning because we want to learn, and learning because we want to excel, we want to get recognized. Not because we want to get a paper at the end of four years, and that paper is called a certificate which after one year won't carry any value. What carries a value for any education system is the knowledge which you carry. And that's where, dear student friends, please do not forget two things which I learned harder way. One is, not really nobody talks about it, but please don't be afraid of failures. Because from failures you learn a lot. And this is the only place where you have freedom to fail. Educational systems or academic institutions are the systems or institutions where you are free to fail. The moment you go in industry, there is no choice for failure because the door is open. There are 10 engineers waiting. So you can't fail there because the cost of failure there is very, very high. So this is message number one. Please, please, when you have those four years at your disposal, 24 by 7, you have to keep on thinking about the challenges. You have to. There is no escape. There is absolutely no escape. If you really want to do well, because your parents are waiting, your parents are really waiting that you will become engineer, you will earn good salary for me, you will earn name for me, name and fame for my family, and that's what is there which you cannot miss, that's number one. And number two, and this is typically for automation, I always kept on saying, think of worst first. Unfortunately, we have been told and we have been trained not to start thinking with worst. You have to start thinking with best. But my advice to you is, think of worst first, because if you want to develop a good automation system, you have to understand what maximum can fail. And in automation system, you have to take care of those failures and then develop the automation system. So you have to think of first, for example, if this sensor will fail, what will happen? If that actuator won't work, what will happen? My program fails, what will happen? My processor fails, what will happen? If my engineer runs away from the scene, what will happen? What will happen to the plan? Because you have given a commitment to the customer and the commitment is Due to automation, you will enhance your performance. The efficiency of the plant will get improved. That's the commitment which you have given. You can't satisfy this commitment unless and until, unless and until you have thought of these two fundamental things. 
So take advantage of the possibilities available, the technologies available. Of course, we uh, I'll be talking about those technologies after this session. I don't want to talk about those technologies at this forum, but after that we will definitely discuss about those technologies. But we want a commitment from you. And the commitment basically is we will work hard. We will not find any excuse. Whatever responsibilities, whatever features and facilities, infrastructure which is available, we will use those facilities to the fullest extent. And no compromise on that. If you give me that promise, I give you the promise, you will be the best engineer in the world. Thank you so much.